Nice to see everyone tonight. Oh, man. On this cold winter snowy night. Hallelujah. God speaks through the fire and God speaks through the ice. Yes. Out of his mouth comes coals of fire and hailstones. Hallelujah. That's the two sides of God's nature. Hot and cold. Humility. Amy Glyja is the cold. And the fire is the exalted breath of God. So it's wonderful to experience his cold breath. Thank you, Lord. Before we go uh, into the service, I, I, I sent these books in a, in a box many weeks ago to be here for when we were here and it didn't look like they were going to arrive but they arrived today these are books that I have written over the last few years the first one I wrote was called From Under the Table uh, this book is about my early life. Had he had a snooze all my with the Louis some some ungur. But not just about that. Man, it's a bad one, yeah. But it's about spiritual principles that I learned Men. by going through what I went through. All the principles from I learned that me and the Jackie Jackson has me Jackie Jackson. And uh, it's a, an amazing story. Uh, uh, the best part about it is it's a true story. And uh, it's from my years of six years old up until about 18 years old. And what I went through as a child after losing my mother at so six years of age. I became an orphan. And I was in a foster home where I was abused. Og jeg var i en foster hjem med blev opfostret af en som blev misbrugt der. And went through years of torment. Og jeg får det jeg kan aldrig vise at plan. And this story. Han der sørger. If you have ever been through anything in your life, om du har været ved jobben der kunne du ikke leve, any kind of pain, nækker på en nå, or any kind of physical abuse, at la ved jobben fysisk misbrug, mental abuse, at la psykisk misbrug, sexual abuse, sexual sexual misbrug. It's amazing that most people in the world today have been through some kind of abuse. Så hvis du ser at de fleste mennesker har været været i det har været jobben akkurat der har været misbrug. And I'm a living testament today of what God can do with a broken vessel. God can do with a broken vessel. God picks up the broken pieces of our lives. And he makes them into a vessel that he can use. So that's all in here. So that's all we hear. God can do with your brokenness. God can do with a broken vessel. And then um, I've written a book here called The Demonstrations of the Spirit Restored. So have you given a book about the demonstration of the Ultric Antans Enterrest? This is about the restoration of the move of the Spirit in the church. And here a snurge on Enterrest in the Rushland Highly Antans to his uncle. Many churches have become extremely dead and dry and boring. The Nekas uncle was probably very dead and tired and chilly. And not much really going on. Well, fact is, gang, that's not shit. They're from. People are so dry and emotionless and have no fire in their belly. Or the next Christian fans who are tired all day or have have a hunger all the time. By now, and they cannot move when the spirit moves. Or it's just about the bewegers. We aren't on it. They aren't on the rules. This book explains how the breath of God. Och han har bara gjort en grej från att se anta trotter. The Holy Ghost breath. Hela antas elter. Moves on things that are living. Kan röras på livande ting. Now if the wind blows on a rock. Om vintern blåser på en klätt. Guess what happens? Kita kan hända. Nothing. 
But when a the wind blows on a tree, men tar ju vinden och blåser av trä. We are trees of righteousness. Vi är rättvisas äger, rättvisas trä. And when the wind blows on a tree, och tar som vinden och blåser av tröjorna, or on the grass, eller av gräset, you can't see the wind. Så ser du så långt vinden, but you can see how the wind is moving. Men du ser du så vinden är rörd by the movement of the grass. Av rörslan av gräset, and by the movement of the trees. Och så ser trä jag kan blåsa. You don't have many trees in the fertile yeah, island. You, you have, have a lot of grass. I'm sure many of you have seen before. How that uh, it can be a nice day. And you're walking somewhere up the mountain. And, and all of a sudden, you see how the wind moves on the grass. So soft because the wind is blowing on the grass. You can go in a circular motion. And you can just sweep over. And you you become aware. Och du blir rädd that the wind has blown. The wind is blowing. That's how the Holy Ghost. So let's forget our Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God wants to move on His people. And the Ghost will rule us and fight you. So you and move us. Oh, rule us. Come, Hallelujah. And this book explains a lot about that. And the Bible is right next to you. Explains about clapping, or those are my clap, dancing, dancing, raising hands, or the hands and arms, stomping the feet, shaking in the spirit. Or you stand up, or lifting the hands, or the hands and arms. It's all in here. Yeah, it's finished after here. Hallelujah. And then we got a little book called "Be Ye Holy." So how did that come about? Are there very tight highlights? This one was published just three or four weeks ago. And then a few weeks ago, I had handed them out. And this book explains when God says, "Be ye holy, for I am holy." And that great front, that God says, "Very tight highlights to ye are highlights." How is that even possible? How is it that even how we judge it? To be holy like God. To be a highlight or some good highlight. And what is it that makes God holy? Okay, the Bible says God is holy. How is God holy? Who says God is holy? God does not have to separate Himself from sin. God pures His ass, she lets His alma from sin. God doesn't have to do anything. God pures His chair, the neck. To be holy. A veil, the high level. Come on, man. He is holy. A veil, the high level. And this book explains how to be. Oh, hold. Hand on here, Bajan. Hung right from us. We should be very happy. It's nothing about doing. Aren't you me at the chair, Anaka? It's about being. At the chair, Anaka. Because you can't do. To do what you chair, Anaka. Until you be. In the worst. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, that's better. Amen. Hallelujah. And in this little booklet here, so a little booklet here, I wrote because of many questions that people were giving me. Oh, that next so smart man. In my own church, we ignore some from my life. This is called dressing to please the Lord. Those are my head here. A weekly answer. How do you talk about it? People were asking me, is it important how we present ourselves? The uncle's point was born in the twenty years, which you could see we are presenting ourselves. Does God even care about that? Like a good Hebrew writer. So I put this little booklet together. So yeah, it's set in a little book in the shelf. It's not a rule book. It's a a regular book. It's not. It's got nothing about what you should look like. There, I mean, what you mean? It has got principles that God has put in His Word that teach us that how we present our bodies is important to God. The word body in Hebrew, you know what it means? It means to be a messenger. That means to be a messenger. What it means? Your body is a messenger. Everything you do with your body, you are preaching something. Everything you do with your body, you are giving a message. How you sit, how you stand, the world calls it body language. And when you go for an interview into a company, they are going to watch your body language more than they will listen to your words. Because they will tell and know who you are by how you present yourself. Because your body is telling everything about you. So this is just a little booklet. 
muito bom ninguém. But it's got a lot of scriptures and, next scripture, and beautiful principles. Vou, vou, vou and then uh, I wrote this for our church. So I will give a to our This is a foundational Bible study guide. And there's a grundlegende Bible study we are in. There's a a lot of cool stuff in here. There negative yeah, Bible study. It's about the one God on for in in eine gold the holy scriptures i love scripture the humanity and deity of jesus a man shall the legend of good on legend yes is our creation and fall of man skapan and fatal man is our redemption or and the spiritual growth and the rockstone zion see young the authority of god out there here to go the purpose of the church the purpose of the church and the holy son come the leadership in the church last last son come the rapture holy religious eternity the purpose of all things and the holy son those will be available for sale after church it has to have been so long after all but if you want one if you don't it's okay on the issue of all that's what is your name these will also be uh, for sale for 10 kronos or is he here this is a as I said so long. This is a picture of the Tabernacle of David. And the other I mean our Tabernacle David's and uh, I had a vision of this tabernacle some months ago. Yeah, yeah, and a vision of the tabernacle for some months ago. And I asked my son to draw it for me. Wow. So be a son of my techno then. That's what he came up with. Oh, did that's my head as my whole. So that will be available after church. So had they had their talked at the moment. Okay. Get it out of the way. So hat liut. Hallelujah. Amen. Just want to make that offer to you if you are interested. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Turn yeah. with me. Slow up your word now. First Chronicles chapter 16. Philip Chronicles Bob 16. First Chronicles chapter 16. Philip Chronicles Bob 16. And scoop up. In the scoop up. Thanks for the scoop up. Glory to God. Fyrir ekki nöldum bók sextan. I'm happy to see everyone here tonight. So glad I'm here so glad to see you. When the weather gets like this, where I come from, everything shuts down. And if this was at home, we wouldn't even have church. Everything would be cancelled. Everybody's afraid of driving in like a little millimeter of snow. So we're driving up here. So we're going up near there. I said, "Oh, come on, Mister Here." Oh man, this is bad. Do you think anybody will come tonight? I didn't have a chance to go. I said, "This is the Feral Island." The Feral Island. They will come. They go, ma. And here you are. Here you are. Bless your hearts. Bless the Lord. Signal your heart. Last night we got talking about a the scene, the heavenly throne room of God. We just got the the hit got the toss out on throne room books where there was there is God's throne. That is throne of And of course uh, his uh, incredible woo glorious presence. Han sa att dörr är sådan närvaro i det. Nothing like the presence of God. Det är inte som närvaro God. And around about the throne we saw the four beasts. Och runt om tronen så såg vi att det fyra elstorn. And we saw the twenty-four elders. Och fyra vänner där det fyra tjugo elstorn. All the way around about. And they are worshiping. Och det är tillbär. And it says they worship day. And night. There is no end to their worship. There does not come a moment where they say, "Hang on a minute, God, I've got to take a break." There is no such thing as a stop to the worship. And of course, they are not clothed in human flesh. That needs to rest. These are spiritual beings. And God has placed in us a spirit that He wants to revive. A spirit that He wants to. Cause to blaze with a flaming eternal fire. An ounce of Muhammad shall flamber up with an avion elf. Not your breath. It's your twin on the drop. His breath. Hands are on the drop. You see, it was God that sent the fire. It was it was God who sent the elf. Man made the sacrifice. A man is going to be offered. But God sent the fire. God sent the elf. Hallelujah. 
You don't have to make any fire. Du pjöt sätt sig skapa när det är. God makes the fire. Gud skapar elden. All God wants from you is you. Allt det som Gud vill ha av dig är du. Halleluja! Halleluja! And the more of you you give, the more fire there will be. The greater the sacrifice, the greater the flame, the greater the laying down of yourself, the more of him you receive, the more of you, the more of him. And people say, what's he on? I want more of Jesus. I want more of Jesus. I want more of his presence. And you know what? What's that? You can have it. You can have it. But you and him can't sit on the throne together. One has got to get off. I'm of an elf. And the one that needs to get off is you. And when I and you get off the throne and we humble ourselves and we will bring his presence. Hallelujah! Praise God. So we were looking at this yesterday. Uh, in the book of Revelation. We will now. This is heaven. Had you him on And Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Jesus learned the letters from Rabbi Yom. Thy kingdom come. 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 Thy will be done. 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 On earth. On earth. As it is in heaven. So, he is. Praise God. So if we look in heaven, so we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God is done. So we can see how the will of God them be established reach, in my reach. earth we mean and where there is a kingdom yeah. there is a king and where there is a king there is a throne yeah. so we can see the will of God in heaven and so we can see how the will of God is done the tabernacle of David is all about this. This is Zion. On Zion, David built or he raised a huge tent. And in the tent, he put one thing only. The Ark of the Covenant and the Mercy Seat with the glory of God shining in all directions. And round about the throne, he put the Levites and the singers and the Kabbalists. And the players on the instruments. And they played. Day and night. Non-stop. 24 hours a day. 365 days a year. Never stop. They changed by course. Every hour. There was a change. New singers. New instruments. But it never ceased. But it was continuous. Holy. 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 Let me get a glass of water, cause my my voice. You're all making me work hard. Before we are by our hushed. Amen. Someone told me the other day. I'm just having me another day. In my in my own church. We have my son come there. You wouldn't have problem. 
with your voice, if you just calm down a little bit, and you know, I tried, because I was going through a phase with my voice that was, every service was difficult, and uh, uh, he said, just, just calm down, no, don't be so loud, and I thought, well, okay, maybe God's talking to him, to to me, to me. so I, I tried, so Ibro, I, <laughs> It ain't gonna happen. <laughs> you know why? What's boy? I understand the words of Jeremiah. Oh. Thy word yes. is like fire! Yes. And when there's a fire, there's a blaze. And the bigger the fire, the bigger the blaze. Glory to God! I'm sorry, I can't help it. <laughs> and I'm not going to try to. Thank you, Jesus. If you don't like when shouting, put something in your ears. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, this is what God said that He was going to restore in the last days. And in the last days, the tabernacle of David was resurrected in his church. In the temple of the living God. Which is you. So me too. I'm the temple. Er the temple. You are the temple. Du er temple. We are not talking about a specific denomination. I'm not talking about God uh, raising his tent or his tabernacle within a movement. This is a move of God among people. Who hunger? Some have hunger. fast after the living God. After him and live on the golden. David thirsted after God. He hungered for God. He sought after God. He longed for God. You know what it's like when you hunger for something. When you crave for something. Sometimes some of you get a craving for. A, a particular food. Like a uh, dain moisture. Dain moisture. My wife is craving a dain moisture. Yeah. And she's been telling me every day well, before we leave here, I want a dain moisture. Oh, okay. Before we leave here, I want a dain. Now a dain moisture. I'm very happy on the bed. But when, when you have a craving for something, some people go to the other side of the world. So called the nerve, but when the body hears it, it's very craving. But I feel nerves that are certain, certain things they can only find in a certain place. Or a cask of better things than I was staying. So they go to extreme lengths. So so they try to stretch as you oil it. To satisfy their appetite. Okay. Okay. What about? Our appetite be of our appetite. God. How great is our appetite? How hungry are we for God? What are we willing to do? What lengths are we willing to go? What mountains are we willing to climb? Satisfy our longing and our hunger for the presence of God. I'm not talking about a hunger for a touch. God can touch you. And the next day, well, that was a nice touch. But you still got a void. There's still an empty space in your deep. There's still like a tomb lost with a job. And so we try all kind of things so to fill up this space. It's marvelous if you fill that tomb room, you. We get an education. We find a good job. Ah, we start a good job. Oh, very good. We buy a house. We have a house. We get a nice car. We get married. We have children. We have a We go on an exotic vacation. Oh, so far than a flat affair. We do all kind of things. So far, just a moment. This is going to satisfy me. At the end of the day, we're down in the liver. Yes. 
the end of the day, that deep so still calls to the deep. The deep within you is still calling to the depths of the Almighty. Because God put that deep in you for one thing only. And that is for himself. Nothing else. Nobody else will ever satisfy the Lord. Hallelujah. So, Hallelujah. David had the revelation of this. So, David had the revelation of this. Okay, let me teach you something. Tonight. I'm in 1 Chronicles. I'm in chapter 16. And I'll read verses 1. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I'll read verses 1. Yeah, 1 and 4. Oh, four and now. Five and six. Five and six. So they brought the ark of God, this is David now, and, and they it. set it in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it, and they offered burnt sacrifices and peace offerings before the Lord. In verse 4, And he appointed certain of the Levites to minister before the ark of God and to record and to thank and to praise the Lord God of Israel. Nefren, eller vet du någon sätt egentligen att ge att tjäna sig fram av oss, herrans, och till att prysa, tacka och lova herran om god i Jesus. Asaph the chief next to him, Zechariah, Jehiel, Shemaramoth, Jehiel, Mathihiah, Eliab, Benaniah, Obedidim, Jehiel with psalteries and with harps, with Asaph made a sound with cymbals. Bang! <laughs> Asaf är lärare. Hon och Nasser kom så att han jag sen ger simmer ramat och ger och vatta jag och en jag men jag och och det dom och gis ger vi hörs på oss sitter då Asaf skulle slå skall dom där. Oh, it was a noisy place. Det var en larm. This was a noisy place. En larm. Praise God. Don't think you're going to go to an eternity that's quiet. As soon as you die and your spirit rises from your body, the, the first thing you are going to be aware of is not peace, noise. You're going to hear a lot of noise. There's going to be harps hopping with their harps. The Lord of God says it so loud, it's like the sound of many waters. We've been to Niagara Falls. We've been to Victoria Falls in Zambia. We get close to the falls. You cannot hear each other speaking. And the, the, the ground is rumbling like this. And that's what the Bible says. The sound is like around the throne of God. Hoppers, singing, voices, thunder, lightning, earthquakes. Hallelujah. Yes. And God wants to resurrect that power. We end the race as a craft. In his church, yes. where God's people are not afraid to move on the wings of Hallelujah! Move on the wings of the Spirit of God! Praise you, Lord. Yes. Because they understand what David understood that for me to have. That much of God's presence, I've got to give him that much of me. And for me to have this much of God's presence, I've got to give him this much of me. God's presence is not cheap. God's presence costs something. Well, I don't believe that. Because when I got saved, 
I got his presence. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I have had his presence ever since. That's true. It's absolutely true. There is God's omnipresence. God's everywhere. There is God's manifest presence. God's manifest presence is when healings take place, oh, oh, signs and wonders. That's his manifest presence. There is in dwelling presence. the day you accept Jesus into your heart. That I'm not talking about. I'm talking about God's dwelling, remaining, engulfing presence. I'm talking about temple presence. Residing presence. When God wants to live with him. Hallelujah. Wow. Am I making any sense? Oh, yeah. All right, moving on. Okay. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And it says there, I see there in verse 6, we are the sex. And Benaniah also a Jehaziel the priest with trumpets, and they were continually before the ark of the covenant of God. Oh, pressed on the Benania, oh, Jehaziel, school of Stavot, plus of Illurar from our period. All right, I want you to go with me to a scripture. Go to uh, Samuel. First. Second Samuel. Second Samuel chapter six. God's presence will cost you something. And I'm getting ready to show you a powerful prince. Have you ever wondered why the temple in heaven was measured? Why did God say go measure the temple? And then God said go measure the altar. And then God says, so so go, go measure the worshippers. Three things. Three things. The temple, temple, the altar, altarem, and the worship. These three things were measured. Here's the three things in the heavenly temple. This is where I'm going. But let me stop here first. Let me look at that guy here. Hallelujah. Okay. Is everybody with me? Yes. Everybody here? Yes. I don't hear anyone. I still don't hear anyone. Talk to me now. You gotta act like people that are alive, okay? Or else I'm gonna have to come pray you alive. Ask God for a resurrection from the dead. Okay. Okay. When when David, David brought the, the um, or tempted to bring the ark of God out of Abinadab's house, they stretched out till at four ushers and old husbandmen job at the Abinadab. After it had been there for seventy years, after that they really had we hold the ark of God. Let that sink in. That can look at for that as such an ear. For seventy years, we hold fierce on. The children of God, so were of God's burden, had no presence of God. Oft dan neer weer op God. All through the reign of King Saul, until to you that we are shouted of them. The tabernacle of Moses, so where Moses had tabernacle, had no ark of the covenant. So where Moses had tabernacle, oft dan he onka ush. Think about that. He reigned for 40 years. And he never asked about the ark. He never inquired about God's presence. But yet everything in the tabernacle of Moses continued as normal. 
Det er altså normalt. They still sacrifice the sacrifices. Opfra ofrene. Morning and evening. Morgen og morgen. They still wash their hands in their labor. Vasker hænderne og rører vatten eller hvad? The priests still went into the most holy place. Præsterne var inde der alle hænder. And offered up the incense. Og offrede røgelse. And then changed the wicks on the candlestick. Og 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 tømte mig vejlsen og 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 også stakke om. And once a week changed the bread on the table. Og 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 skiftede brødet ned og og skiftede brødet om. They still had all their feasts. Og alle vasker der var om. Everything continued as normal. Alt helt og som normalt. But no presence. Preach. Does it sound familiar? Yes. Yeah. The church has continued on as normal. So go on and hold on. So on, so on, so on. But no presence. We still have our Sunday services. We have our Monday Sunday down. We still have our festivities. Oh, oh, the year of the fest. We still sing our songs. We sing some of the songs. We still raise our hands. Oh, the dance and all. We still do this and do that. Three of these and two of those. Oh, that's it. Our song. But who? Gosh. Who? What? Among God's people. Who are middle God's people? Is asking the question. We are not spoiling. How can I bring God's presence back? To this house. Who is asking the question? Where is the presence of God? Where is the presence of God? Who has got such a hunger and a yearning and a desire? Who are here to slay that slower of lungs? That they are knocking on heaven's door. Oh God, talk to me. Tell us. Show me. Speak to me. Hallelujah. This is the kind of people that God is starting to raise up today. This is the kind of people that one here and one there and one there and one there. Better get enough hunger for the presence of God. Hallelujah. And it won't be about their church. It won't be about their doctrines. It will be about giving of yourself. And to give the shalom in pleasure. We talk shalom to the Lord. We talk to Him. Woo! Can I hear an amen? It's going to be people who are willing to pay. The ultimate price. So David, so David was the one. David was. Amen. 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 And brings it to its rightful place. Into the midst of the temple of God. So when he did that. The first time. We all know the story. The first time he failed. Because he did the right thing the wrong way. But three months later. David had learned a few things. In three months, after Jamal, he started to research. How shall I bring the Ark of God home to me? And he studied the Torah. He looked in the scriptures. He understood what God's purpose and God's will was. Concerning the carrying of the ark. But then this is what he did. This is so powerful. If we could get a vision tonight of what I'm trying to tell you and we can leave here with a new birth of a desire to lay ourselves down. We could see a revival. You know what holds back revival? You and me. Not God. It you go. If my people, on fast the most, which are called, 
by my name. Et naunde mui nom. Will humble themselves. Ja, ei mui jas. And pray. Beia. And seek my face. Search a osho mui nom. And turn from their wicked ways. Then like will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. And I will heal their land. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Look what happened. I'm in 2 Samuel. Chapter 6. And beginning in verse 12. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that pertaineth unto him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. Edoms, og alt i han åtte, fyrde til en ørskots da var, ta og få da av det sted, og flott i ørskots ur, huset i Obed Edoms nyan, og i David sted, vi fakner i. Ok, listen now. Norskan nu. And it was so, that when they went that bare the ark of the Lord, had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. Ta i teir og i bauer og ørsk herrans hadde gengje seks sti og frei han tarv og gøyna kolf. Do you know how many offerings he offered? Hva er det som jeg offrer der og fra oss? Do you know what it cost David? Hva er det som det kostet i David? To bring the ark to Zion. At føre ørsken en sion. They say there was about six kilometers. Det sa at det var om seks kilometer. From Obed Edom's house to Zion. That would mean about eight, close to eight thousand paces. And every six paces. One, two, three, four, five, six. He made an offering. That means he would have offered almost 1,400 oxen. 1,000 for the whole way from Obedidim's house all the way to Zion to the place that David had prepared for God's presence was drenched in blood. It was drenched in the blood of the sacrifice of the oxen. And you know what the oxen represent? Whole burnt offering. Whole burnt to offer oneself completely. Are you getting that? It it was not cheap. To bring God's presence. It cost David something. It cost him. One sacrifice. After another. And another sacrifice. After another. Oh God, give me your presence because I've given you one thing. Do you go? Jeremy did offer it. No, have you given that offering? Oh God, let your presence be in my life because I did what you told me to do and I gave you that one thing you wanted. Oh God, let no one ever turn a corner with you to do a mischief with a person. I'm not interested in two bad old just now. And God says, "Good sir, yeah, but I want one thousand three hundred ninety-nine more." Man, yeah, but how? I told some truth on which of them? You're not done yet. You're not done of me requiring of you. 
what I require of you. You have not done yet. Giving me what I want to exert out of your life. So that you can prove to me that you are worthy of my presence. So that you can prove to me that I want to dwell Hallelujah! I wish somebody would shout I was telling you all on Wednesday night that you will never experience the presence of God more than how much you value His presence. What does it mean to you? We have... Oh, I get so stirred up. I get so... I get so stirred up. It looks so opaster. When I... Opaster. Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> when I... When I look at the church today. And, and what it has become. When I see the stage of... Of entertainment. Of the dancers dancing in front of everybody. And the music playing and the singers singing. Nothing wrong with it. But there is something wrong with it when it's to entertain the spectators. The congregation had become spectators. Rather than a body of believers who are led in worship into the presence of God. We belong to a church generation who has quieted down the move of the Spirit. It has pushed down the breath and the wind of the Holy Ghost. And we wonder. Why is God not moving today? Why don't we see happen what we saw happen before? 